crazy shit I watch. It's kind of hard to disturb me. I can watch the exorcism of Emily Rose. I can watch all the Friday the 13th movies and Nightmare on Elm Street's no problem, no sweat. I can even watch the torture porn like uh, The Saws or The Hostels by Eli Roth. But this series here, Dahmer, had me hard to sleep at night. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't go to sleep. You ever watch some shit? Then after you watch it, you feel like you need a full body wash. I mean, the scrubs, the loofahs, bring that shit all out. The washcloth, yo, turn on all the lights in the house because you're highly disturbed. That's what Dahmer does, directed by Ryan Johnson. My God, this series right here is, of course, about Jeffrey Dahmer. They give you the whole kid and caboodle of Jeffrey Dahmer from his childhood to his middle age and the, the time he spent in jail, the police negligence of how he got away with this from the 70s to the 90s. They give you it all. And let's get this out the way. Evan Peters here is excellent, spectacular, because he plays just such a stoic and pale face. Like, is, is there anything behind this face or this, is he getting joy from this? I, I can pick up he's getting joy from a couple of scenes here. Like he's kind of gives a little smirk, but really there's nothing there. It's almost like Michael, My if Michael Myers could talk, it would be Jeffrey Dahmer. And I think Peters does a great job with it. And like I said, they deal with the police negligence of how he got away for, for so long. There was even a point where they brought the victim back to Jeffrey Dahmer. You'll see it in the show. I'm not gonna spoil it. Episode one starts off pretty much at the end of its reign. I'm just gonna leave it there. We're not giving uh, too many spoilers, but yo, this shit was so super stressful and so uncomfortable just being in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. And, and, and it was wild. I'll just take it that. And, but my favorite episode of this whole series is episode six. They do something different. Uh, after episode two to three to four, you know what I'm saying? We kind of uh, deal with Jeffrey Dahmer, his upcoming, you know what I'm saying? His birth's victim. But episode six takes it into the POV of this victim, this black death a uh, gay guy, you know what I'm saying, uh, who was living his life. You, you get to know his family. You get to know all these things about him. Then he comes across Dahmer, and they form a relationship. And your whole time, your heart is beating, not nothing to happen to this dude. You know, that was an incredible episode that I have never seen done before in this type of crime drama. So episode one and episode six are my favorite. I think, the, I think it starts to get a little bit slower towards the uh, later uh, uh, episodes, like episode eight, nine, and 10 are kind of slow until like the very end is good. But uh, shout out to Jeffrey Dahmer neighbor who had to smell all that fucking horrid shit coming through the vents. You're talking about rotten flesh. He used to put the bones in the oven so he can crush them. Good way to get rid of the body if they turn to dust and then he could just spread it out, you know what I'm saying, above his apartment or whatever. And then what's left of it, he will eat it. I think Jeffrey Dahmer had a issue with commitment. Like he didn't want anyone to leave his presence. Like, yeah, you're going to sit here and watch Exorcist 3. No, you're not going to work if you want to go to work. Oh, uh, I'm going to kill you. Can you imagine what Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment smells like? It had to smell like a full hoof and mouth disease. It had to smell like an R. Kelly bathhouse. And this lady had to live next door to it the whole time. She was complaining and complaining. C police didn't do shit because it was in a uh, bad uh, neighborhood, man. It's just so sad. And what I took away from this documentary. Well, it, it was sadness. Do we feel empathy for Jeffrey Dahmer? I didn't because he was so stoic and so plain, but they let you, they sit you right here with Dahmer the whole time. So you got to go through this journey with him. Almost a lot of times you are looking in the perspective of Jeffrey Dahmer, but when they take it and you see how, with the families that he destroyed, you just feel sadness. You feel dark. This is a dark documentary. Um, it's not like a over the top terrifier. Like I said, the gore is not there, but they, they they do really good things with sounds, especially episode six with the deaf dude, you know, and the power tools, you know, you hear it more than you see it. You know, uh, as far as the camelism goes, you're not going to see him eating brains or eating uh, uh, people's arms and shit like that. It's not, it, they do it real subtly. You know what I'm saying? They, they'll show a shot. And uh, like, if you didn't know what it was, um, you couldn't really see this as camelism. And I, I'm just going to say that, like, if you didn't know the context to the shot, you'll be like, that looks pretty good. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine living next to Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, you know, remember in Thanksgiving, like your mama cooked chitlins and shit, you know, for all the black families out there, they bought a cook chitlins and they stink up the whole house. I kind of like the smell of chitlins. That's just me. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm fucking serial killer too, because I like a lot of Budweiser's like Jeffrey Dahmer. <coughs> 
<laughs> but overall, if I'm going to rate Dahmer, I think I'm going to give it a 3.8 out of 5. E Evan Peters is haunting, disturbing, and sad all at the same time. His dad does a good job, too. They're taking the disrespect of his family and what he can do. And he was kind of having these feelings, too. Like, where the hell is Dexter Morgan when you need him? You know what I'm saying? I, I was really impressed by this. But, like... It's only a one-time watch. Like some some movies like Schindler's List is only a one-time watch. I think this is only a one-time watch for me because it's so disturbing and it's based on true events. But overall, I think they kicked ass with this uh, Netflix film. I, I just couldn't stop watching. It was so bingeable. It was one part in this series. You ever talk to the TV? I felt like almost talking to the TV. Um, the neighbor comes over and Jeffrey Dahmer's offers her a sandwich. I'm like, bitch, you better not eat that part of that motherfucking sandwich. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? I was like, don't eat that fucking sandwich. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's in that. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you like this video, go ahead, hit me that like button. If you really like the content, consider subscribing to the Q Review family. I got to say it. You know, I got to say it. Don't just stare at it. Don't eat a Jeffrey Dahmer sandwich. But eat it. Peace. I'm out cold, you hoes, been exposed. Walk up on you, slow with the flow, and I know you got mold. Left for dead on the road, I strode when your car got to.